paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Paranormal Karen. Funny too. Paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah. Cha cha cha. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Paranormal Karen. Um, this is I've been looking forward to this episode for a while. This is fun. It's scary. It's weird. It might all be a lie. It could be the absolute truth. I don't know, but it's um we'll get to that. First of all, um, yes, if you saw my Instagram, there should be a very, very happy announcement. I'm in a very good mood. I'm just gonna say that, throw it out. My prison sentence may be over in the summer. Uh, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna apologize if I start coughing because I'm, we're still in this winter of everything's coughing and I just made my super healthy um, uh, smoothie that's filled with so many powders that I always choke when I drink it so I'm not dying <laughs> and and then today's guest Renee you all know Renee Renee is having some uh, chainsaw issues is that what's going on Renee <laughs> Yes, I also have my very healthy smoothie because <laughs> my nerves are shot from we just had a crazy storm in Portland. Ugh. So yeah, a bunch of trees came down. One of them was on my neighbor's house. Oh. And so now yeah, it was, I saw it happen. Oh my god, Karen. I saw this tree fall on my neighbor's house and a bunch more fall down. <gasps> so I put on I put on a yoga video to just chill out. <laughs> And the teacher was like, okay, let's go into fallen tree pose. And I was like, I've never heard you mention this pose ever. Like, <laughs> what oh. is happening? Oh, my so. God. So this is not the topic that we're going on, but I feel like the sinks or the weird things or the instant manifestation or everything is just, we're getting there. And now I just sort of had like four different things fall into place where I was like, Oh my God, everything I wished for, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So Ooh, I got it, chills while you were saying all that. <laughs> uh, I hope so. It could be another trick of the universe, which is, a uh, the tricksters. The, yeah. Yes, that energy is out there, but I think, uh, I think I got it right. They tricked us once, uh, for everybody that knows that we thought, I, we had my mother in a place where she was safe, where I can tr go out and don't have to be there every night and every morning. And it fell through. But we think we got it this time. So I might be uh, I might be free to leave Utica. And uh, but anyways, that's another story. Hopefully I'll do a uh, podcast on that where I'm talking about it because everyone knows I've been an angry person for two years. It might change. OK, <laughs> so. This is where I reached out to Renee after the predictions podcast. And some of you people texted me on this and we are in alignment. But I got into a conversation with Renee about the Antichrist. And I'm going to give you guys background on where this came from. So there is an account on TikTok and on Instagram, JK Ultra, and she is my favorite. I love her so much. I I think I uh, I fangirl everything she does. I think I agree with everything, but two things, which is ridiculously slim for the amount of people I disagree with. Which, uh, <laughs> but she did an apocalyptic uh, series, and you want to look it up. So I'm gonna. This is kind of wound up, kind of weirdly, but Dolores Cannon found somebody to channel Nostradamus. And it's pretty fascinating, the information. She goes through the list of information that Nostradamus gave them or or even the old quatrains that wasn't available to him, certain things that he shouldn't have known or wasn't at that time. And then they get to the topic of the Antichrist. And he gives a I think somehow through this, they he gives the astrological chart of the Antichrist. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had watched these tapes right before, but this... I know. I'm like, I should have gone back to it. <laughs> I was just watching the one I sent you, but there's so much to it. And then... She said in her comments, and we're going to work backwards, and we can even watch during the break if you want, Renee. Um, yeah. So she says in her comments that if you guess who it is, she will delete the name. And I went through and I saw a name right away, and I was like, 
oh, that's it. And then I matched the chart and it was almost exact. It was like Mm -hmm. one sign off or something like that. And then just now I went back and she has deleted that name. Oh, so yes. And I'm going to first, uh, so Renee and are going to go to this three, this is a three parter. We're going to talk a little bit about this. We're going to talk about what we think the antichrist is or what he might be, or sort of some things that seem blown out of proportion. We're going to talk mm-hmm. about unethical astrology. And then at the end, we haven't decided if we'll say who it is, but we will leave some wonderful hints. So, mm-hmm. um, let's start with like the actual, um, let's start with what, you, uh, Renee, what do you think the Antichrist is? Yeah. So when you sent me that video, I immediately struggled because it was like pinning the Antichrist on one person. Mm -hmm. And I think the Antichrist is an energy, an entity that maybe is like, you know, coursing through some of the major players in just the world economics and world politics. And I don't, I don't believe in one God. So why would I believe in one antichrist? Oh, what a great, uh, I love that. Yeah. (laughs) And it's like the duality we just are, you know, brought up. If you brought up Christianity or just Christian ideologies, it has this like overarching theme that the duality is singular And it's just like matched between two faces and it's just not, we can't simplify evil and the bringing down of civilization and the environment and every disgusting thing that we're facing as a species right now. Like that is not one fucking person. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sorry for the F bomb, but I feel very seriously. (laughs) (laughs) It is not one person. There's not one person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's an interesting thing about that. So I'm just going to I don't know if I believe it's one person, but I'm going to take that side just a little bit to play our uh, Mm -hmm. duality out. Um, There's also everything. I think this is why none of this stuff really scares me or the end of the world, which I don't think there Mm -hmm. is an end of the world or anything. But sometimes I forget I'm talking to people and they're like, they look at me terrified and I'm like, oh, I forgot they live in that different bubble than my bubble. Um, (laughs) Because I feel like we absolutely, when you're doing psychic work, I I forget who said it this way, we're doing psychic work, you have at least three channels you can take. And the psychic is seeing the channel that is the strongest. So we're seeing the path you are on now. But like, I feel like with 2023, the economy was supposed to tank, or they were supposed to tell us that it was tanking. And everybody said, screw it. I'm going to buy what I want and spend what I want. And the economy was fine. So Mm -hmm. that is a power to the people type thing. All right. Yeah. So that's the first part. Now, what was in sort of the JK Ultra thing was that this person is not the Antichrist yet. That the Antichrist or that energy is going to groom him later. Of course, it's a man. Mm-hmm. Um, right. That'd be the greatest <laughs> trick of all. If it was like a woman, that'd be great. Um, I mean, like, I'd kind of love to see it, to be honest. Like, right? I'd, I'd rather be fucked over by a woman for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't this, it's funny how it lays out like a movie and so many things connect. But, you know, I have to say there was a different podcast I was li- listening to where this guy was making all these synchronicities and that name me, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And he lost me because I was like, well, now we're just you know, connecting cookies, spiraling. Right, right. So I think you, I tend to agree more with you. I do sort of believe in this, um, like, I don't know where I am with the entertainment industry being all evil, because I'm kind of starting to believe it, because there's too many synchronicities of course that's great promotion if you're Lady Gaga or whoever, but I'm starting to think it there is a deal made that you are making a deal with an energy maybe it's not that official but it's sort of like i mean i can break it down to harvey weinstein everybody kept their mouth shut that's evil to me yeah everybody no it's totally true i mean there's this like philosophical theory that 
the that as you climb higher in no matter what field it is, but it could be like specifically like politics or entertainment, as you climb higher, the first time you have an opportunity that's too it's too good to resist. So a little bit of your moral compass goes out the door, but not enough to change who you are. Right. Okay. I've just I've just done a little things bad. I'll I'll compensate for it over here. And then as you climb, there's just more and more resolution or like not resolution release of moral compass or redirecting of moral compass because like the way you're altering your course Mm -hmm. and like when decisions are too success based. Yep. Yep. And, and I, and you also, there is that like, I can see it now when someone just likes me because they know I'm a comedian or they think of someone and I can read that like the, and I see it. I hate to say it this way, but like I watch Bill Maher and Bill Maher no longer, he's too famous. So everybody is Mm -hmm. somewhat nice to him. So he does not have any more compass of who is actually a good person or, and that's a judgment, but I kind of know who's using me now. So, or, or, or thinks I'm something that I'm not. So that's always an interesting, um, format also. So um, I think, so this is what I know from sort of a Bible or stuff like that or things that are around. So I'm not that much into the symbolism, like 666 is the Hebrew um, symbol for WWW. So we're thinking internet, right? I was like, oh, internet, right. (laughs) (laughs) And it could be, or it could be, that's the way things travel. Um, Right. The other thing was he will be a person he will bring peace to the world he'll be connected to so many peace prizes and stuff like that that people will um uh not believe you when you say no that's the antichrist but also he may not be the antichrist at that time this is again playing all the kind of overly dramatic this makes a good movie type stuff right So, so he the only detail that was different in her chart for the Antichrist and the person we look up was hers was, I think, January 7th. It was January and this person's birth was February 5th. Like it was off by like 10 days, but it was unbelievable how close that chart right. was. Like I kind of was like, okay, fine, whatever. And then she, and I love that when people were like, is it Trump? Or, or did they kind of said that to Nostradamus. Yeah. Was, she was like, don't joke with us. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not that obvious. Yeah. But I, I, this idea of somebody kicking it off. Right. Like Judas. And, yeah. I see. And for me, when we're looking at just like one chart kicking off, like this antichrist movement, mm-hmm. it's, it's another thing that I have to think about is like what the antichrist means to me is totally different than what it means to a lot of members of my family. Even Right. Like for me, the antichrist is someone who wants to have control over our bodies, who is like appreciating profit more than the earth. Mm-hmm. And to other people, the antichrist is a drag queen reading to children. You know what I mean? It's like totally totally different things and i feel like it's really hard i feel like the biggest enemy of humankind right now is that like we're not able to agree on what's good for the human race i feel like if we could all just like band together and be like this is a standard of living that people should be entitled to Mm -hmm. that would be a huge shift but we just get caught up on bullshit yeah that like doesn't if, like, if we could just live and let live and let people have their rights, I think <laughs> there'd yeah. be a lot more potential for peace. Well, you know, that's funny because, like, your Antichrist actually feels more like the word anti-Christian. And I know neither mm-hmm. of us. I've had this, I have this new phrase now where I say, and this is true, I talk to Jesus all the time. I believe in Jesus, but I am not a Christian because I think that word has been twisted and it's not being, you, do you know what I mean? 
Yeah, no, I, Jesus came to me before and I was like, I'm sorry, you're just not for me. And he was like, it's cool. (laughs) (laughs) So like, I believe in Jesus too. And if people want to work with Jesus, then like work with what he stands for. Yeah. Yeah. And also, um, it, like, I think, again, I understand what you're saying. These things are actually, and when I say anti-Christian, I mean Christ consciousness, which I think mm-hmm. is, a to- we, we're throwing around all these different terms. So it for to you, it may not be a guy that comes in and starts the ball rolling and is this evil person. Um, I do think exactly what you're saying, like the church I don't know that the churches have done more good than harm or what is the actual, the trying to control people. A lot of churches have done that and turned into cults. Well, you know, the Catholic church has more violence in its history than any polit, like, than any polit, like, you know, country really. Yeah. Because they're old. It's older than a lot of modern countries. Right. And it's, they're still covering up how horrible they are. And I can't believe that the Pope made a statement that women who get pregnant through surrogacy, that they're, that it's an abomination. Like, I'm sorry, wasn't Mary a surrogate for God? Uh, Like for Jesus? Like it wasn't that immaculate, you know, conception. They didn't have sex. So mm -hmm. what's up here, buddy, with that? (laughs) You know, I, (sighs) that, I hate to say this because there's some lovely ones out there, but I'm really done listening to old white men. Oh, I've been done listening to old white men since I grew a pair of tits. I was like, absolutely (laughs) not. Like, no way. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I'm sure I don't, shouldn't write off everybody, but it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, when people tell me how great Gandhi was, I'm like, you know, he slept with kids all the time, right? That's what I always say too. And I was devastated, I was devastated when I found that out because I was a huge Gandhi fan. And then I was like, oh, Yes. yes, I'm not. Yes. Because that's not cool. Now, Nelson Mandela, well, he's not white, but he was saying he did a sermon on why why we hit you women, why we hit you women to keep you in line. Right. Right? Like so, there's no escaping it. It's important that people are willing to change their minds about people that they idolize. Mm-hmm. Like us, you know, not being cool Gandhi anymore. And I feel like that is a problem in a lot of conservative circles where they're backing up people and hey like it's bad on both sides i just like i'm not even going to sing all the conservatives here because like i think biden's a joke Uh, um (laughs) i voted for him and i'm gonna vote for him again but like i'm just he's not my he's not like my guy you know yeah yeah but i feel like there's a problem on both sides there's a problem with democrats there's a problem with republicans and liberals and you know, conservatives where it's like, Hey, like this is a blatant misstep. This is a blatant lie. This is a blatant instance of corruption. And you're still backing this guy up. Yes. But not only backing him up, not even saying lesser of two evils. Mm -hmm. But then again, I've just made myself a hypocrite because I said, I don't like Biden and I'm going to vote for him again. You know what I mean? But I'll at least talk about the fact that we need other options. I am about anarchy. I'm an anarchist. And it was funny because I said, I said, my friend said, you're an anarchist. And I was like, yeah, but I don't like that. And he goes, well, you know who the biggest anarchist was? And I was like, who? And he was like, Jesus. And I was like, oh, okay. So a couple of us are all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know what else? And this is another thing about celebrity. And I think all of this is falling, which is there's a TikTok account about all the rock stars that had 13 and 14 year old girls. And a couple of mm-hmm. them became their legal guardians and boyfriends. Oh, God. Yeah. And I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you who it is because your heart will be broken again. <laughs> And no, I know there's a, I know there's like a Bowie rumor. Um, and I've looked at it. It's not like, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't okay, want to, yeah, like, I don't want to, I don't want to throw up my psyche about that. And um, we don't want to be, I mean, listen, women have been walked all over forever. And I think now there's a different light being shined on that. And hopefully we'll start to, you know, because sometimes, well, you know, what's, what's interesting is I don't know if you've heard of the writer, Pamela DeBar. 
but she kind of um, like wrote a book about being a groupie and like was a very famous groupie. And she, I don't know exactly how young and I'm not a proponent of this at all. I'm just saying what she says. I'm not, I'm not taking a side. It's just an interesting thing to hear. And like, that's it. But she was like, yeah, like we loved it. And I'm an older woman now. And like, I don't regret my choices. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to digest that. But like, you, like, if that's how you feel about it, I'm not going to, I'm glad you feel good about it. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. That's good. Not Nobody everyone, not everyone does. Not right. everyone feels good about it. Some people do. And like, none of us were there. Right, right. And I but I clearly do think we are starting to get more protect. Well, I want to say we're getting more protective because here's the thing. We need to be right. A 14 year old can wait till she's 16. That that, oh, yeah. that rock yeah. star will still screw her. But no, also, 14's not. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. And that was Priscilla Presley. Let's just jump right out of yeah you know and, and it's ridiculous right. and it was right there on the news and nobody cared and nobody said anything because he was Elvis. and right. so it so there was a different like when you see pictures a- of priscilla presley now she was a child right well jerry that's like jerry lee lewis but it was his cousin so his career was destroyed like he like married like his 13 14 year old cousin <laughs> so how we got but it's it? like I don't know either. And it's just, but it's also like, it it shows how society has changed and evolved because like that was totally out in the open. And now people are like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. this is not acceptable. Why are you not in school, young lady? Like, it, the, no. <laughs> and at least we hope it's unacceptable because I have to say, I think the right. Epstein crap is the tip of the iceberg. And I can't believe comics are making Epstein jokes. And I just on Fox News, mm-hmm. Neil Cavuto was talking about someone to this financial guy, and the guy was talking about how really Epstein was a philanthropist and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, did you, what? How, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe that's just women, but I can't, like, uh, 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 but anyways. All right, let's take a break and come back. We'll get back <laughs> on track. <laughs> Are you a seeker who craves a life of authenticity and freedom? but can't seem to get unstuck from experiences of duality. My name is Z, and I spent years stuck in victimhood, craving enlightenment, but trapped in a cycle of two steps forward and what felt like a hundred steps back. I felt like I was drowning in fear and shame until I started learning about the nervous system. It turns out that while we are spiritual beings, we are only able to be here because of these physical bodies And the nervous system is just trying to keep us alive by bringing us back to fight, flight, freeze responses. We can get stuck in these defense states or we can gain resilience by developing a respectful and trusting relationship with our nervous system. If you're ready to learn more, check out my YouTube channel and join us for online coaching and courses by going to www.anexperiencer.com. That's a n experiencer dot com. See you there. All right. Now that we got that weirdness out of the way, um, <laughs> jumping back into an antichrist thing that in paranormal investigation, I don't buy this, and a lot of people do, which is that Christ was born at three thirty three. So the three thirty three in the morning is the witching, mm-hmm. and I'm not that big on that rumor. I think three thirty three is when it's quiet. Yeah. Um, but it could be. I could be wrong on that, but I never jumped on that one. Um, so, yeah. So all these, uh, I'm trying to think what else was on that. Let's let's segue into what you feel is unethical astrology. Yeah. And I would actually I like to broaden this out to beyond astrology, but also to psychics, tarot readers, mediums, because I have seen you know anytime I see someone post something that's like meant to be scary Mm -hmm. like I've seen horoscopes that if I read that I would be afraid you know what I mean I would be like you know like knowing how much stock certain people put into horoscopes um depending on where they're at at their life like I write horoscopes and when I'm making content I try to think about like are people in it so people someone's in a fragile state that's going to see this potentially like 
what what can I understand about this energy and put a positive spin on it while warning right. someone about like where the stickiness is. Mm-hmm. But like when we get doomsday astrologers or psychics, when we get people, you know, being too light as well, being too optimistic, like those twin flame universe people who were like, mm-hmm. I don't know if you watched that documentary, but that yep. show was wild. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it's sort of like an, an abuse of power in the sense that like people, if you have an audience, they're looking to you for some sort of guidance. And I just think there's enough bad stuff out there that we as practitioners don't need to be making things worse. We need to be like, we need to acknowledge what's happening in the world and give out information about how people can support themselves. Like Mm -hmm. right now, Mm -hmm. we've just, we've got so many societal changes, but not only that, this is the one that really pisses me off. And I have a friend um, who has a, a very well known in the true crime community her, I'll plug her, um, her name's Sarah Turney and her sister Alyssa went missing when we were like 13 and she's done an amazing job. She's been, she's just, just like done an amazing job getting her sister's case out there because she was told by the police that was the only way that her father, who we think did it, would be prosecuted, right? Wow. So she's been very vulnerable about her situation and her life. And there have been Instagram TikTok mediums, she'll send me these TikTok videos of mediums saying, I channeled the spirit of your sister and giving a totally unsolicited Uh, psychic reading to someone who has made their trauma very public. And I lose my mind every time it happens because I know her and she's texting me and it's upsetting for her. And she's like, and I also don't appreciate people, A, doing a reading without asking me and B, trying to grow their platform Mm. in that way because she's always happy to talk about her sister with anyone and she doesn't mind if other people in true crime cover the case. But when these creepy spiritual people come in and start siphoning off trauma to build their brand... Like if, like, if you see that in any TikToker, medium, anything, who's talking about like an active true crime case or giving readings about people that like they don't have permission to do, that is so unethical. Yeah. That is so not okay. Not only that, that's the flip side of when someone copies your account and then goes, I have information for you. Like, it's the same thing. Yeah. And that's what she said. Cause like, you know, I don't want to talk too much about her business. Um, no, but but that's a good example. I, I, you know, yeah. Yeah. And, but it's just like, you know, if she she said, if she, this person would have messaged me directly or if these people would message me directly, I would be open to it. Cause she, like, she was in my coven when we were 13, you know what I mean? Like she's totally into it, but people need to ask people need to ask before they give readings. Yeah. And I know sometimes I kind of feel like sometimes the information is just out there. But I, you know, even in my tarot class and my Patreon, I'll say this over and over is you have to watch your words because you're planting seeds. You're planting seeds that could grow. And if you're wrong, you're actually adding another option that shouldn't be there. And I don't know how else to say Mm -hmm. this, but somebody, um, pregnant ladies are the number one someone called me and they were like somebody told me i was gonna miscarriage which no that's not right right and i didn't even have that on the cards and the woman ended up having the baby fine but you cannot say that right you know what you know what if you know what you can say you could say, hey, take it easy. Watch your health. Watch yeah. your health. Uh, check in your doctor. Um, nothing. And, check in with yourself. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I, I don't, I hope I have never told anyone anything that scared them or they didn't mm-hmm. call it in the moment and give me a second to clear it up and go, wait. And this is yeah. crazy. But like this Antichrist world stuff doesn't scare me at all that would one on no. one. I don't want to scare anyone, but you're right. Right. Um, and also, you know, I do love TikTok, but there was some, some young crazy stuff going around. 
I wouldn't have a welcome mat because that's welcoming in demons. Like someone makes something up and what? everyone else runs with it. I know that was the- if that's what you believe in, honey. Like if that's what you believe in, people need to understand that witchcraft and psychic ability is about the power you give yourself, and it's mm-hmm. what you believe. In. Yeah, it's it's a it's a young person that gets an idea and then the other people report it like they thought of it. It's really bad. It's also, there was mm-hmm. another one, and this was the funniest one. Uh, there was a, a, a real quick video of a, it looked like a goat standing on its back legs. And the mm-hmm. and the girl says, oh, honey. Sounds honey. adorable. Right. <laughs> and, and, and it's all black behind it. And then this one guy starts it. I am from Islam and this is the devil at your door and you need to blah, blah, blah. And then this tape gets stitched and stitched and people are saging. Like, I can't believe I had to watch that. And it was a what? wax museum statue that was not at anyone's back door. And it went so viral. And I was pulling my hair out like you are all acting like. Do they think they're in the ring? Are you in the ring right now? Do you have seven <laughs> days to stage your house? Like, what are you talking about? Like I, Everyone was so sure that they knew how to get rid of this thing. And I was like, how about light a match? That's how you'd get rid of that. How about... How about roll your eyes and flip to the next video? That's how you get rid of it. (laughs) Right, right. But you're so right with this. I I feel so bad for your friend. That's crazy. And it happens to a lot of, like, people in true crime. That's the place where we have to, like, I mean, true crime is totally not my thing. But I see how, just like spirituality and everywhere, like, there's just people need to be emotionally considerate of others. Mm -hmm. There was a, um, I remember hearing this case because a lot of people that didn't believe in psychic, um, it was very strange. It was in LA and a little boy disappeared and it was one of those that catches fire. So the whole city's out looking and hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. And some woman in Northern California came down to the police and said, I had a dream and he told me where he was. And the police said, okay. And she brought him directly to where the kid was. And that's what you do. If you have information, you go to the police. No, it's true. It's true. It's she's lucky that she had police that would listen to her because I'm sure there are probably instances where people, um, you know, have been overlooked. Can't get the police. To, can, yeah, can overlook. But also, like I, I've also learned a little bit about the laws about when there are there have been you know mediums that have come out and said like, oh, I think there's a body here. And it'll be a medium with a lot of followers. And then people in the, that area will like organize search groups. Oh. But if you organize a search group and you find a body and it's not escorted by the police, that can create issues with prosecution. Uh. And so it can create these legal tangles that these influencers aren't even considering. So they're like real life messing with people potentially. Wow. You know, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. There, I know a friend of mine and she took a class with a medium that worked for the police and Mm -hmm. he had said to them, and I disagree with this. And I asked someone else and someone else was like, no, that's completely wrong. Um, he had told them to keep it vague. There's a body of water and there's a da, 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 and to not give details because then you become a suspect, which first of all, have your alibis in line. Yeah. Of course you'd look like a suspect. Yeah, no, totally. You know, know where you were the night the kid was killed. But I actually think he was trying to throw them off so that he was the only one that could do it because that's what you want to do. If you're talking to the police is give them a detail or something that you know they know that you shouldn't know or something. I don't know. It was a very strange. Yeah. Obviously, I don't do this. I would love to if I had that ability to help find people or stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. Everybody is too um, jumping on a bandwagon here. So that it, you're right. That is absolutely unethical. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry your yeah. friend had to go through that. Yeah, she's strong. So, but it's just like I get very protective and defensive over her. And so, you know, my antenna went up when she told me about it, but it's not just her that it's happening to. It's happening to a lot of different people. So, if you like, if you are following people on TikTok and they are giving like readings that weren't asked for and they're speculating about 
true crime cases that are active, like without the family's permission, like they're bad practitioners. They just are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's enough. Well, I don't know. I kind of am. Yeah. We're going to leave that there. Cause I was like, there's enough mm-hmm. things that you can remote view or do with the daily news to practice rather than trying to save someone. I don't know. It's get it's getting yeah. very murky. It really is getting murky. I haven't been in love with the industry. The industry has gotten to a weird place where I'm seeing like a lot of weird pettiness amongst practitioners. And mm-hmm. luckily I managed to stay out of all of that. Um, but I just feel like it's just really important that we're all staying grounded and logical right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like the thing, I don't know. I've never like gotten a message for somebody that I, first of all, didn't know, or I never wake up with messages for other people, but I would, I don't even know. I certainly wouldn't charge anybody if I had that, but, um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, it did get kind of crazy there, but it is also the young people that are so excited about psychic stuff and spiritual stuff that are getting, mm-hmm. it, you know, and then it is the weird. Which is great. Yeah. I mean, I think it's good that they're empowering themselves. They think that's what it does. Yeah. So that's good. So let's, let's get onto something lighter like the Antichrist. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So now, do you think, again, this gets back into person or energy, because I remember Mm -hmm. talking to someone about um, demons and then the devil, that those are two separate things. Uh, Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. I think that demons and the devil are different things, but I think that if someone believes that demons and the devil are one thing, then that's true for that very specific person. I don't believe in rule. I, the only rules that I believe in are the ones that we make up for ourselves. So like me personally, I think the, I think demons and devils are like different. Okay. I think pan and satyrs are different. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but I think it's like, I think that really what it comes down to is like someone's individual perspective. Mm-hmm. And we'll know, you know what? We will all know later. Yeah, that's true. What if we just like all go to different places though? Like what if we all go to something <laughs> that like, cause we like, no matter what we're envisioning for heaven or reincarnation or whatever, there's no exact clone. Like no one's thinking the exact same thing. So like, what if it's like this weird thing where our spirits go to this hologram that our subconsciouses have created for us to live in mm. when we leave this physical form? Like, was that too out there? Did I get too like woo woo? No, no. I kind of love that because, you know, I was telling someone this the other day, years ago, my completely non woo woo, non spiritual mom called mm-hmm. me and she was in her 70s. And she said, Karen, I was sitting out on the front porch and I realized this is not real. The dream world is real. This world is not Ooh. real. Right. And I was like, yeah, right. And I, we talked like for a minute and she had to go. And then I brought it up again and she was like, I don't really know what you're talking about. But for a minute, I think her brain, like, I think we have moments like that. I, yeah. uh, And then it kind of went away or she chose not to remember it because it was too much for her or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, I, I think I keep hearing, and it's it's wonderful that you say that because I was just listening to a, a thing about the Matrix. By the way, the show, the podcast is called The Conspirators, and it's great. And if you're having trouble explaining the Matrix to somebody and why it might be true, go to that episode mm-hmm. because he covers both sides. And he was talking okay. about a gamer that disappeared, a female that was very high up in Google or something like that. And one of the last things she said was, oh, it's all a game, which is, I I don't know if that's what Steve Jobs said, but there are certain people that have had that near-death experience or right before they die, they're like, oh, this was a mind experiment. Like they've said. He that. said, yeah, he said, oh, wow. Oh, yes. wow. Oh, wow. Yes. It wasn't so, him. Like, yeah. 
Yeah. Like, oh, wow, it, w- it was a game. Well, he didn't say that. I shouldn't put that word in his mouth. But that I've heard that two or three times like, yeah. oh, this was a game. Oh, and I'm out. Or this, ah, yeah. I see. I feel that. I feel that at times. I love that idea. And I love that technical people are the ones that ha- that go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it, get it, get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they probably go, they're thinking in grid terms anyway in ones and zeros so they just jump over to the other grid <laughs> yes yeah that's what i feel like you die you pass through a wall and then they take you into a room and they go okay so here's the whole computer board of what happened because i yeah. i think everything is a puzzle and everything is ai not in the computer way but really isn't everything just a puzzle don't you think even psychology oh absolutely especially psychology <laughs> I think that, yeah, I mean, and here's the thing too, I think everything is a, is a puzzle and I feel like there's multiple puzzles on the board. So like if we're talking about the antichrist, well then like if you do piece all of that together, that's one puzzle, but like, bro, we don't sell one puzzle here. We have like thousands of puzzles, Mm -hmm. you know? So I feel like it's sort of like, there's a million different patterns that you can pick up on at once as just like a a person Mm -hmm. and the patterns that you pick up on, it develops you as a person. It develops your spirituality. It develops your intuition and it develops your entire perspective. Yeah. Which is why it's good to have self-awareness around patterns, especially right now when like Pluto's just moved into Aquarius and shit's going to get really weird. Um, Knowing like, what patterns you're being exposed to, what messages that you're being exposed to continuously. If you are consuming information, but not reflecting on it, how that's impacting your subconscious. So I feel like it's really important that we, our minds are going to get really, really busy and our ability to process and take in information is going to speed up um, as, you know, as Pluto goes through Aquarius, it's going into Capricorn one more time before it goes into Aquarius for like 20 years. But during that time, like our minds as a human species are going to be evolving dramatically. And we are going to be, there's going to be a lot of revolutions and there's going to be a lot of political shifts, but like as a species, as a society, as a culture, this is like a really just, it's like we're being dismantled and rebuilt. And that's why it's so important to know what are you tapping into within the collective consciousness and like what makes the most sense for you without losing, like without losing your ability to connect with other people. Because when we become so engrossed in what we think, and what we believe in, and we don't leave any room for those things to be questioned, we totally alienate ourselves from opportunities for resolution. I I have so much to agree with and say to that. I would just tell a funny story, and then we're going to come back on the other side. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm joking, but I can't stop watching The Walking Dead because I think people getting their oh heads, God. heads smashed in makes me livable. I love Utica. The Walking Dead. Okay, I love The Walking Dead. I've rewatched it. Like I've rewatched the series, like probably at least three or four times. So not into t- not not entirely, but throughout time. Go on. So I, I did a gig this weekend where the guy was driving around. He was the, driving me. I didn't use my car, and he yeah he like hit three things, and then I was like, all these people, everybody was. Then the plane driving home clearly backed into something, and then pulled up and backed back. I've never seen a plane hit something, and I Whoa. T- I know. And I told my non spiritual friend, and he goes. I think you've watched so many zombies. You're manifesting zombies. That's who's driving. (laughs) What's so weird is I had a zombie dream, not last night, but the the night before. And I was like, where did that come from? And now I know it came from you because we were going to talk about zombies. (laughs) I have something to add to that. Everybody, hold on. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. How's that spiritual awakening going? 
I know. Don't worry. Help is here. Highlyspiritualperson.com is a haven for spiritual misfits and empaths navigating spirituality and mental health. My friend Camille has a plethora of resources on her site to help you on your spiritual journey even if you're just starting out. It includes individual and collective Reiki sessions, personalized guided meditations, sleep affirmation tracks, and so much more. Camille has so much to offer. She's going to be on my podcast in December. I can't wait to talk to her. Her blog posts and podcast episodes explore spirituality and are great for folks carving out their own path. She has written two easy to follow guidebooks, one on breathwork and the newest book, is called Manifestation is Easy, and it features 22 step-by-step manifestation techniques, as well as tips and advice on how to overcome the most common blocks and start changing your reality. Go to highlyspiritualperson.com. I promise you, you will get lost in how much information is in there. It's one of my favorite rabbit holes. Okay, so, so many thoughts. Back on the puzzle, I think that once you get the puzzle, the trickster energy throws you off because you're not supposed to get the puzzle. Totally. Right. So you figure out one thing and then the trickster comes in and goes, not quite. So that we're never completely there. So, um, yes. I think Dude, the trickster. Yes. Sorry, go ahead. I, I was, I was well, yeah. go ahead because I was going to tip go to a different topic. So go ahead, trickster. Well, I feel like with the trickster, like I have had a trickster come into my life, and like you know, like I don't know, the trickster has a way of like making you obsess over signs and synchronicities. Mm. Um, and then like you kind of like break the spell, and you're like, this isn't fucking going anywhere. And like, but then you realize that it brought you somewhere else and then you start a new path. Does that make sense? So I feel like if you're, if you're finding yourself in an obsessive state and if you're finding yourself like, um, knowing that you're on the brink of change and like chasing something with your entire heart, whether it's a career or a, a hobby or a person or a relationship or whatever, like just really check in with your self awareness. Because like I've seen people with Twitch, like with tricksters on their backs, and I was like, you need to ground. You need to ground. I'm excited that like I'm excited that like the trickster energy has you all hopped up. Like because I think that like the trickster sometimes can help us course correct too. Yeah. But it's just like but what the trickster is is it's not what you see, so your perspective is off, and it's like a really it's a really high energy force. And so if you're getting really high energy and really like, oh my God, the signs, the signs, the signs, like you're probably onto something, but if you're not grounding, the trickster is going to like blow it to smithereens. Ah, that's, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. In fact, I'm going to have to go through and listen to that again because that almost, now we're on 17 different topics. Oh my God. That almost (laughs) leads me to toxic positivity. But you know, I had an experience mm-hmm. here in Utica where something jumped on my back so much that I spun around. I was walking home from yoga and I was like, who just hit my yoga mat on my back? I had it on my back. And the next day there, I was doing a reading with someone and she's like, there's something jumped on your back. And I wonder if it, the way you said it with Utica, it would be an elemental or a trickster or something. But anyways, oh. yes, but I do think we're like, I just think we're not supposed to get the, you're right. Okay. Um, the other thing, uh, the trickster in the puzzle, but also, um, I'm going to keep going until that comes back to me, but it was, uh, Mm -hmm. it wasn't the trickster. We got past that. It wasn't the puzzle. Um, there's so much. Okay. So let's just keep going. I don't think, Uh, So I don't think we get to figure it all out. And after we die, I think it's another, uh, I think I hit that one. Okay. So now I've lost my place. Oh, I know what else I was going to say. Folks, don't worry about EVPs. I'm, my smoothie is very loud. So the straw, (laughs) straw, so (laughs) that's not the devil. Um, (laughs) 
Yes. So now I do agree with you that there is like a evil overtake and I'm going to call it an evil overtake of ego. And uh, Mm -hmm. like, like it is that I'm very nervous. I can tell you, I don't know everything. I do my best. I could tell you my experience, but there's a confidence out there that everybody really knows that they're talking about that scares me to death. Oh yeah. I, I don't appreciate that quality in anyone unless it's like a doctor who's about to give me major surgery. Like that's the only time I want a confident opinion, you know, like I want people to be open to whatever, you know what I mean? I do. And I remember what I was going to say now. You were ta- we were talking about zombies and I think yes. I said this in the predictions episode and if I I taped my part like 7 times before I posted it non-person players I feel like this is just one of my theories I have a million and this could change tomorrow mm-hmm. but I think what you were talking about about our brains are about to get smarter right now they're on reset I can't people that can't remember losing what I was just going to say, all this oh, type yeah. of stuff right now. I did a Patreon podcast about where I was like, am, am I in Groundhog's Day? The reset right now is almost unbearable. And the, <laughs> True. the uh, there, there are videos, and I have seen this myself, where people look like they are glitching. They look like they're glitching. Um, Somebody gave me this wonderful example of how she was in a store and the lights went out and the store became black um, and everybody just turned the light on in their phone and kept shopping. And we were saying how uh, the store guy was like, no, you got to go. We can't, you know, this, this bring you up. Right. And, yeah, and this is like a safety concern now. And they were just like, no, but I'm just going to finish shopping like the program was I'm shopping and they couldn't Mm -hmm. break the program. And I had said that non-person players were going to become a parent. And I think that is either that we really are sort of living in two dimensions at once. This is what it feels like too. We are. With the internet, we are. Right. And there's that, I hate to put it this way, but there's that I'm going to say religious cult because I don't just want to throw religion in there. There's the religious cult side and there's sort of the I'm on my own side or spiritual side and they're not interacting. And it's almost like, don't you feel like you're talking to foreigners sometimes that don't speak the same language? I feel like... I feel like I shelter myself from having conversations from people like that, but I see them Mm -hmm. and I, because, you know, they, they want the attention so that it's so easy to find online. Right. Um, and I see people and every once in a while have like a strange encounter with someone where I'm just like, I can't get on your wavelength and it, I just can't get on that wavelength at all. It's like, they just seem totally unrelatable to me. Does that like, does that sort of align with what you're asking? Yes. Or almost, I don't want to say non-human, like that woman running off the plane who, I don't know what that that was weird, but I do kind of feel like I, sometimes I feel like there's another species here. Oh, I absolutely think that there are aliens here in human bodies. I'm like, I think I told you about my experience where I had telepathic communication Mm-mm, with definitely. someone. Oh, shit. Okay. So I'll try to make it small. I'll try to shorten it up. So this was like years ago when I was still dancing and I was going through like stripping mm-hmm. and I was um, going through just a lot of like psychic dreaming and lucid dreaming and really vivid dreams. And I was in Portland. I wasn't living here at the time. I was just like kind of like hop, state hopping for like six months and just dancing across the United States. And so I was in Portland for a little bit and I was dancing at this club. And I shit you not, I picked the club because it was called, I think it was called like Miss, like Mystic. It was called Mystic. And I just like, it was a dive, but it had like a woo woo name. So I chose it. Mm-hmm. And 
there was this one time I was dancing and I was having like window for window um, visions of what was happening in my dream. When you say window, for, yeah. window through window? When, well, I was actually looking through a window, but like, like if I put both my dream and what was happening um, next to each other, they'd be the same. And I was looking out a window Okay. Um, and everything was orange because they had the really dark stuff on the window. So you couldn't see in. And I had just heard a podcast about like humans having telepathic communication with aliens. And so I was like kind of playing with that. And I was just having this really surreal night at work where I kept having like deja vu and dream scenes playing out in real time. And I, this guy came in and my antenna went up that like he was a good mark for me. Like the stripper antenna, you talk to any stripper intuitive or not. If someone walks in and their stripper antenna goes up, like they know that's their mark. So like this guy came in and I was like, my stripper antenna went up and I went and talked to him. But like my psychic antenna went up a little bit too. Like he, like he had an aura and he was very respectful. He was a very respectful patron and he bought a dance, which like, you know, go do that. Like support your strippers, go buy dances. That's how they make their money, <laughs> you know? So he bought a dance and I'm having really bad deja vu. So in my mind, I looked at him and I said, I think you're an alien and I think you can hear me right now. And if you can, I want you to wink. And he gave me this, what the fuck look? And then he winked. Mm. And I was like, that's weird. And I like, it kind of like, you know, gave me an electric jolt and I finished my dance and I didn't say anything about him verbally about what was happening. And I like, got called on stage. So I did my dance on stage and I looked at him and with my mind, I said, I'm going to go to the bathroom really quick. If you got that, I want you to like raise your right hand and like, let me know. And he like, again, made a face and he like raised his right wow. hand and did, did like a fist bump to the music. Like he was dancing and so I went into the bathroom and I had like a full blown psychic hot, like hot flash, like a psychic hot flash. That's the only way I can explain it. I was like, what? Like, and I just was like, felt so electrified by this like exchange I was having with this person. And so I went and I sat down next to him and he was like, first thing he says to me in a strip club, this is not strip club conversations. He says, you're not like other people, are you? you operate on a different frequency. Wow. And I was just like, you're not like other people either. And I was like, but yeah, no, I guess I don't. And like that kind of like threw me so high in my like psychic energy that I excused myself. And I was like, I went to the locker room cause I just needed a ground. Wow. And I said, and this was like, I was trying to make money. I was so broke at this time. And I was trying to make money to buy equipment to start Witch Doctor at my podcast that I used to do. And I said to the Alien Collective, I said, hey, I think one of your people is here. I think it's really cool. I'm having this experience. I like, I'm really tired. I want to go home. My goal for tonight, like I'm 100 away. I'm 100 bucks away from my money goal for tonight. And it's because I want to start this podcast and I want to like have it be positive and make people laugh and provide spiritual insight. And then I had to leave the dressing room because I got called on stage. And so I went and I got called on stage and I did my dance. And while I was dancing, he tipped me a hundred dollars. Mm. Oh, that's it was great. crazy. Yeah. I, it was crazy. I felt so high, like on just like, woo woo good you know like when you yep. just have an intense paranormal experience i felt so paranormally high and i like could not sleep and it like i felt electrified and alive in a different way for like three days you know there's a uh i had this conversation with elaine which elaine uh, I, I, Elaine and I always talk about demonic stuff and demons because she removes them from people or for people. And she's very, mm -hmm. very good at it. And this is a place where I get very, um, so all that stuff is open, but I also believe because of like the work Elaine does. And sometimes I do that we had that I wouldn't, I don't know how much of not what you did right there, but like so, the other night I heard a really different voice in my head 
And I was like, Mm -hmm. nope, nope. Yeah. Right. Totally. Because I also feel like in this, like what you described, the way humanity is being, shall we say, reprogrammed, there is a lot of ick out there. And this kind of quote unquote third world war is feeding that ick a lot. And it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, no, this, I, I feel like we have to be very careful. And it's weird because a while ago, what you described, I would have done exactly the same thing. And I'm sure you felt safe. Like there's an alarm. I felt safe. I felt safe in my entire being after that interaction and that hasn't gone away because it was such a positive experience that I believe that there are aliens like watching over me that I can, that I can connect with because that's not the first time it's happened. And if I ask for alien activity in my life, I almost always get it. That's and I don't know, like alien is my word. It could be guardian angels to someone else. Right. You know what I mean? Like the words don't matter. The experience matters. But you know what, too? I will just say this. You have those beautiful almond eyes that are (laughs) described as Palladians. Keanu. Oh, I've heard this before. Keanu Reeves has them smaller. Um, There's this model that from a while ago that has them that almost sometimes I feel like I can see. I could see what alien race there's more of in a person. It's It feels, yeah, that feels right. And I mean, like, that's, I have so many alien stories, like going to Roswell, like just so much weird stuff has happened around like that alien ideology. But then there are people who are like, have really intense fairy situations. And like, yeah. I don't, I that's don't invite me. fairies into my life. I, I don't invite fairies into my life because like, I don't want my shit to go missing because they're mad. Like I, I already... I am with you. I am with you on that. And I seem to have a lot of fairy stuff. That's why I have this weird theory, but that's why I feel like I have had so many trouble in Utica because Utica is elemental heavy, heavy. Mm -hmm. And I, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I'm not inviting anyone. Don't hear me. But even when I was talking to this kitchen witch, (laughs) she was like, what do you eat? And she's like, without even knowing, she goes, wow, you eat all fairy food. And I was like, don't say, (laughs) don't start anything. But I do think that could be a law if, if they are, if that is part of the human DNA, that's me. But you know, whenever you have, this is probably why, in even in paranormal investigation, you go on thousands of them and nothing happens and hours. Oh, nothing. totally. And then the one time something happens, you are so jazzed that it just, you're not going to stop because it, it makes yeah. everything that you believe real. And it, t- it takes your breath away. Mm-hmm. Like I have had experiences where everything was perfectly beautiful for 30 seconds. And, you know, just because the experience was so intense. Wow. Like, but you just are suspended in the moments and you can't live in them. Yes. And And they come when they're supposed to, I think. Yes. And you know what else? This is the, uh, the, this is my last closing sermon. Um, (laughs) Everybody knows that I, to say, that I had when I was in one of the worst situations I've ever been in, I just looped my mind and I said, my name's Karen Rontowski and I know who I am. My name's Karen Rontowski and I know who I am over and over. Cause I had a flash of my tarot teacher saying demons want to take your mind. And that was the first thing that they're not going to take my mind. And then I read in this book, the exorcist handbook, she, lo- oh, yeah. she loops, uh, I think nursery rhymes. So, And she said, uh, my friend Tommy was like, I'm not sure about that, but keeping your mind on something, she says it confuses them when there's a loop like that. But uh, whenever I get anything, not even demonic, when I just get nervous in a, in a, I don't know, group of people, I will say that over and over because I do think as we're rebooting this game, it has changed. And where ayahuasca and mushrooms, which I'm a big fan of both. Me too. They can be programmed or deceptive. They are not a hundred percent pure. I always bless mine. I always bless mine before I take anything. Yes. And someone told me a story from a trip of a person and uh, that person ended up working with a black magician who had programmed the ayahuasca. Yeah, totally. So yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm always in charge of my own drugs. Like I don't, 
I go on my own. I don't, I go on my own journey. <laughs> That's a great. Yeah. Unless someone has like a really, really good reputation, but like, honestly, if you're like, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. they, they, yeah, they were working with someone who dabbled in the dark arts and they were surprised that they did something weird to their drugs. Mm-hmm. Like, well, they I didn't, don't have a problem yeah. with the, they didn't yeah, know I don't have that. a problem with the dark arts, but. Well, it was, it was her being programmed to another person. Um, and, that's interesting. And I know how real that can be when you're doing that, mm-hmm. but it's still, you know, it's still there. Okay. So, um, as usual, you and I just went off on tangents, had a fabulous time. <laughs> so, um, do we, or do we not let reveal who the antichrist who we think who might be who we don't know if there is one could be or ask i want to know i want to know your name i didn't i didn't choose any singular person okay um but i want to hear who you i want to hear who you guessed and then that was deleted okay so da, 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 give me a drum roll and i already checked with tommy and tommy was like say maybe i don't know but of course a woman sitting in utica probably does not know who the Antichrist is, but this would be my guess. Judging from the astrological chart that matches Nostradamus, judging from he will be the person that brings peace, he will be known as a humanitarian, and he is not yet the Antichrist. And uh, I will pull this if I have any nightmares. <laughs> the person clearing up the Israel Palestine is the King of Jordan. Hmm. I'm like looking him up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you watch the JK ultra video of the astrological chart that Nostradamus came up with and the astrological mm-hmm. chart of the King of Jordan, it is unbelievable. Yeah. All, uh, almost all Aquarius, like almost all in that same space. And, right. Um, but the, and hopefully maybe saying this diverts it or like I said, I'm not that powerful, but. Right. Well, yeah. And I also think that like, I'd have to go back and look at the chart that was being described, but there's a lot of Aquarius energy happening right now. You know what I mean? So I'm always uh, well, like, could it just be a, a timestamp? I'll, I'll send you, bo- oh, it could be a timestamp. That's a great, that's a great, I'll send it to you. And then you can look up his chart. I'll send you what okay. came from Nostradamus and then what came from her. And it's fascinating. Um, and also, you know what, maybe these are choices and maybe this choice goes away or maybe it is a timestamp. But the part that I know about him bringing the world together, that is, they are stepping in. They're going to finish this off. I I think he is the one to bring peace. And then hopefully I'm checking out and you guys can play with whatever comes next. (laughs) (laughs) And again, if it is, I, uh, I'm like... I, but the other, she wouldn't say it and she kept deleting it, but I was like, yeah, I don't know, mm-hmm. I don't know if I, uh, obviously I'm an idiot comedian, so that's going to be my excuse. But, um, thank you, Renee. Tell everyone where to find you to book a reading, to book an astrological reading or whatever, tarot reading. Yeah. You can find me most actively on Instagram, but I'm starting to do more TikTok. So I would really appreciate your TikTok follows because I'm just starting to dip my toes in. But I did make a fun video about tea leaf reading. So if you're interested in that, go okay. so check it out. Um, on both platforms, I'm at Rainbow Glitter Star. And my website is rainbowglitterstar.com. You can book through my website or you can just message me. Either way, it's fine. All right. Wonderful. Thank you again, Renee. Yeah, this is just so much fun. I feel like there's just so much we could have still talked about. And I have, I just want to say one thing to the listeners is as we move through this, um, Pluto and Aquarius energy is to make sure that you are having a moment with every single one of your senses each day, even if it's only 30 seconds, like while you're cooking dinner, you're, you're really smelling the garlic or the ginger, and then you're really tasting your food and you're really noticing the fabric that you're wearing because we're going to get really, really cerebral. And there's so much air energy happening right now that like we need to find balance in earth and as in our physical forms. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, we could float away. Um mm-hmm. 
Also, someday you and I should do a show on uh, like the connection between psychic and sexual energy. Oh, yeah. Like, I think I think there's a big gap in that. And I don't know if I've ever uh, heard a podcast on it. Oh, I could totally talk about like psychic energy and sexuality. I'm a Scorpio sun with a Aries moon. So I have a lot of Mars in my chart. Well, yeah, and Mars. Mars is like fucking, you know what I mean? Like Scorpio, Scorpio is the sign of sex. So like, and I've got, I've got ideas about that that I haven't talked about before. So like, let's get on it. Cause we'll, we'll get down. Yeah. We'll get yeah, down. yeah. Right. Keep, start <laughs> keeping some notes and we will do that. Yeah, totally. Sure. That. All right. Thank you, my friend. Go uh go uh add Renee on your TikTok. I uh join the Patreon. Every Patreon, every month we do one live class where you get a safe space to practice your readings. You can also just get the energy reading of the month. You can get two paranormal camera podcasts, which is just sort of my ADHD of what I think about. And uh that's it, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Paranormal Karen. Of queen. Paranormal.